Okay, so I have found two exemplars of full colored spot illustrations to inspire what I'm doing, right? And these are the two I'm doing so I can use some different um, coloring techniques on them, right? So first I wanna review how you set it up. So you have your vector line art as an EPS and you've saved that to your desktop. Let me minimize this. So here's my EPS. <clears throat> Let's copy it onto the desktop. It's important in my process to save it onto the desktop so that you don't make this mistake of just opening your EPS in Photoshop. Because when you open an EPS file, which is a vector file, <clears throat> into a raster program like Photoshop, it will force you right then and there to rasterize it. So if I say OK, the problem is now this is made of pixels that if I change it, it's not a smart object anymore. It's just going to soften. Okay. So now look at it. It's all blurry and terrible. And not at all the clean vector that I created. And it will print like that. And you'll see that happen all the time. Just poor printing of clean art. It breaks my heart. So instead of that, this is what you do. You open up a new Photoshop file. Just like we did with your logo to make it print ready. So file new. And then I want it to be a minimum of 12 inches. Right? This is just to give you a lot of flexibility with your poster. So my illustration is basically as wide as it is tall. So I'm going to do 12 inches. Let's do by 14 inches for this one. Right, And I want the, the standard lab resolution, which is 50 higher than, than professional resolution, to be 350. I want it to be RGB color. I want the background to be white. Create. This is just a blank background space. There's another reason for this. We want a blank background layer. It's our white, right? That's the white of the paper. Then we drag and drop our EPS file. It's the only way to do it on top. And then it will come in as a smart object. So I place it just like we did with compositing. on I'm being really slow and you'll see it's a smart object now that doesn't mean that it doesn't show up with pixels it does show up with pixels but then the difference is because it's a smart object when I increase its size to any size I want that edge is always going to be as clean as possible because it's not making up pixels anymore it's always going back to the vector to um, to output what it would be within that pixel format. Now I just made this thing huge. I just made it 30 by 30 inches, right? And look how clean that edge still is. So if I flatten it, you won't get that blur anymore, right? Those are pixels are as clean as can be for the art. Now, the reason we don't color at super high resolutions is this is already 243 megabytes. Whereas before I made it 30 by 30, it was around 60 megabytes. So this is a better size to work with. So how do we set it up? Well, this is the ideal way to set it up. So we'll go through that. How do we get to this level? So first, we want to create a color layer that goes between the vector line art and the background. And we do that simply by, where's my new file? Here we go. Simply by making a new layer, a new blank layer on top of the background layer. And I want you to call that layer flat local color. Now, 
if you go to color, you'll have the, the big color um, selector, which is full spectrum. You can go to swatches if you like and get that old, that old school, you know, 1930s color palette. And this is often used for flatting. So for instance, if I use these swatches, let me show you how I might do that. I'm going to put them here. So I'm going to pull them out like that. Okay, so this is how I might do it. I'm going to lock my line art layer with the padlock. I'm going to rename my background layer blank white. <laughs> Come on. And then I'm going to lock that background, right? Because I don't want to accidentally color on it because white's there, right? And then I keep my line art as a vector. So how do I fill in my colors? Well, I first I'm going to use the magic wand and do, do it the easy way as much as possible. Use contiguous, use a tolerance of 32. Go to your vector, click on the empty spaces that are fully contained, right? Then I go to my flat local color layer, and that selection moves with me. And then I'll use, it's under the gradient tool, the paint bucket tool. And as when I hover over swatches, it will immediately go to the paint dropper, and I can pick a flatting color and just put it in, right? Then I can go back to the magic wand, and I can select hold down shift, select more, then I can go to the flat color layer, I can use the paint bucket, and I can drop it in. All right. You can see that it's not so easy where the shapes aren't contained, like the K and the I. So I've already started that with this other file. So I'm going to close this one. Turn on these flat colors, right? And now I'm going to, like, just let's do the simple stuff. Let's do the horns. Hold down Shift. Do that. Pick a flat color. Go to the paint bucket. Go to the flat color layer. You know, drop it in. Um, everything, even things that I think should be white, should be colored white. Uh, so the eyes, I might pick like a, a light gray. And then drop that in. On the flat color layer. By locking the layers, it keeps you from making silly mistakes. right? And the whole point of flatting is that you use different colors for everything. So the, whoops, so the highlight So the highlight in the horns, or the shadow in the horns, depending on how I color it, I'm going to color with a different color. Right. And what that does is it makes it really easy to select each color range. So that's a little too close to something I already have. So let's do... Let's do this. All right, and then let's see, let's do something like deep purple for these. Sometimes you have to zoom in to get these shapes, these little contained shapes, but it will all be worth it when it comes time for coloring. And then I should do the nostril too. So you see, I'm going to my vector to get the contained shapes with my magic wand. That saves me a lot of time. With all the teeth. Just hold down shift. Or you can actually click here 
and that will be an additive lasso. So you don't have to hold down shift anymore. Right. And then pick the color. Let's see, let's do another light gray. Maybe even something, yeah, the 20% gray. Paint bucket, drop it in. And I think now I want to go a little lighter. Do this. So just slightly lighter for those teeth, and maybe even lighter still for these teeth. So even though it's all flat color, it's almost it's gives you the illusion of it being dimensional. All right, what else do I need? I need all the the uh, little flourishes. So all the internal flourishes here, I think I've got them all. I'm gonna make one color. These are all pretty arbitrary. <coughs> and then the external flourishes, I'm gonna make a different color. Oh, you see, I'm still on the additive, so that's you got to be careful with that. So I, I prefer just holding down shift when I wanted to add. So these are all the flourishes on the outside. Let's, see, let's go with the pink. There we go. And now, I think we've done all the easy stuff. Oh, I have, well, that's part of the lettering. All right, there's this one little spot here. So you wanna make sure you catch your details, right? And that's going to match this color. So I can hold that option and steal the color from what I have as well. Now, these are not necessarily the colors I want to adapt to use, right? This is just something to put in. So this is flatting. And now this is the harder part of flatting. How do I get that K? So what I can do is use a lasso. It's a regular lasso tool. I can use my tablet for more accuracy. And I'm on my vector layer, right? And I'm just going to select from it. And I'm going to work within my line art. And I don't need to be all that precise with it. I just need to stay underneath my black line, right? That gives me a shape. I now use my magic wand and I hold down Option to minus the magic wand selection. And I'm gonna minus from it the black line art. All right, so now I've got the perfectly cleaned out shape. Then I'm gonna to go to my flat color layer, I'm gonna delete what's there, All right? Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the eye. So I go to my vector layer, I look at the eye, and I say, okay, I wanna cut it out right here where it's open, follow down through the line art, cut it through right here, and split the difference. There we go. Then I use the magic wand and hold down option to deselect the black from it, right? And then I might I can hold down shift. You can always modify selections. Make this a little straighter right there. Add that in. And then go ahead and deselect the blacks 